Bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Welcome everyone to our Frito Cacao podcast. Um, we will start just offering kind of my own ritual with my owl to um, to speak with, with the truth, with the wisdom. Um, I have one cacao here in my hands, warming my my body. So um, let's start with um, our topic today, and we are sharing. We want to share. We want to talk about what is a cacao ceremony. Um, as you know now, cacao is a trend. And we can see the cacao in every holistic event, in every spiritual work that we are doing, meditation, yoga, some healing, all that kind of spiritual events. Now we are seeing the cacao in all of them, or almost in all of them. So... I think we need to know more about it. We need to know what is happening in a cacao ceremony and we need to know what is a, a product called cacao ceremonial. So we will start with some questions to all of you. Um, well, first, in the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the country throughout Australia and their connections to the land, sea and community, we pay respect to the elders past and present and future. We respect all ancient South American civilizations or Latin American civilizations to allow us to speak with their knowledge and their truth. The first questions are, what does cacao mean to you? Before talking what is a cacao ceremony or what is a ceremonial cacao product, what cacao, what does cacao mean to you? Do you have experience with a real cacao ceremony? How do you differentiate a unique cacao ceremony? Mm. Does everyone can do a cacao ceremony? What do the people look in, in a cacao ceremony? So I bring these questions because sometimes we, we keep going with these ritual ceremonies without questioning what is the cacao allow us or bring it to us or what is the definition that we have of, of a cacao. So Saying this, what is happening in a ceremony? I will tell you um, our experience assisting, visiting, attending these ceremonies. And most of them, they open a um, sacred space at the beginning. Um, they work in circles around 15 to 20 to 25. I'm just telling to the people that have never assisted to a cacao ceremony and what you can expect. Um, there is some facilitators, usually yoga teachers, um, meditation teachers, cacao facilitators, and you arrive to the place, usually there are yoga studios, sacred places. You arrive to the place, you sit down, you meditate a little bit, open the sacred place, you can see an altar in the middle. And then all, almost the cacao place at the beginning. Place at the beginning of the ceremony to open your hearts to release 
to flow. And then um, some of them talk about the cacao, the history of the cacao. Some of them just say what, what cacao brings to you in your body, in your soul, in your mind. And then you will jump to um, some healing, you will jump to um, static dance, mm. breath work. So as you see, the cacao is a companion. It's, some, it's, it's, it's someone that is next to all the different approach about healing and energy. Um, some of them, we are using a lot of cacao to dance. Um, some of them, they have a DJs or um, ancestral rhythms and sounds that allows you to flow, to, to play with your body, to go around. Um, what is my, my own experience attending these ceremonies? And I just feel almost uh, not connection and not respect to the cacao, to the plant. Some of them, they don't know, they don't talk anything about the history of the cacao. They don't tell me anything about what is behind the cacao, what is the process of cacao, where does cacao come from. And in my mind, I ask myself, how they can expect me to connect with something that I don't know. Sometimes we arrive to the cacao ceremonies or something involves with the cacao. They give, they give us a cup of cacao and they just say to us, close your eyes, breathe, meditate, put your intention in your cacao and then the cacao will change and the cacao will allow you to flow and they don't speak anything about the plant. They don't speak anything about the tree. They don't want to speak anything about the journey. And I ask myself, how, I, how can I connect with something that I don't know? And I'm choosing cacao now, but you can ask this for everything. How can I connect with someone using a person that you don't know? Try to see that you are meeting someone and you have someone in front of you. And that person asks you to trust and to flow and to allow you to receive or that you can ask everything to him or to her, but you don't know anything about him or her. So we don't have any connection yet. In the connection is knowing who are you and who I am in that reflection. In that connection allows me to flow, to receive, to share. But I feel that almost everyone is not saying anything about what is what is what is behind that drink. Um that's that's, that's the first one. And I will say mm, the knowledge that they have about the cacao. Or maybe they have the knowledge, but maybe they don't share it. And I think it's really important to share. Share about the tree, the process. We call the journey of cacao. Uh, we see the cacao as a, as a character. Imagine cacao is a human. So I want to know the life of him or her. I think cacao have these both energies. Cacao is an androgynous too. So I want to know him, her. Um, so the first is the knowledge. The second is the preparation. The preparation means... Um, what kind of things they are adding to the cacao. And I will have to say that I have been in ceremonies that I know 
that they are buying the cacao from <laughs> from the supermarket. They are buying the cheapest cacao that they find in the supermarket. They add milk, they are other things. And they are using the cacao into the event because we know that cacao is now a trend. We know that if you put cacao in your event, people will come. People will connect more. People want to experience that. We already know that the cacao is a trend in all this spiritual world, holistic. But I have been there seeing that the people is putting the cheapest one. But they are saying to you that it's going to heal you. That cacao in the supermarket is not to heal anything about your body, your mind, or your soul. In the preparation, we always promote, since our start, the cacao has to drink it with water. And the meaning behind is to recover and respect the cacao. The traditional way of drinking it. For the, for the Europeans, chocolate means cacao and sugar. Cacao and sugar brings you um, the word ch chocolate. For the Mayas, for the Aztecs, chocolate means bitter water. So yeah, cacao was drunk before eating. It was just with water. That's one of our sharings, to try to respect a little bit more the plant. Um, to respect the process, to respect what these ancestors were doing. And also I have to tell you that it's the healthiest way of consuming Everything has a reason. So when I came to these ceremonies and then I started adding milk to the cacao, and then I started in cinnamon and then I started in sugar and then I started in like too many things. Ima Im <coughs> imagine this character that I told you, this human, in a cup that is cacao, and the people is adding you things. Because they want that the, the cacao tastes nice, tastes delicious. So they keep adding things. Cacao, 100% cacao, a ceremonial cacao that they will talk after, is bitter. Has to be. But we don't like that bit bitterness. And, and I will repeat, I will use that, that metaphor of the cacao as a metaphor. But that bitterness is the bitterness in our lives. We have the joy, the happiness, and we have the sad, the darkness. And yeah, 100% cacao is going to be bitter. And I allow the cacao to be bitter because it's the natural form. And I'm respecting this natural form, that essence of this cacao human androgynous guy. So I don't need to add anything else. So, coming back to my experience, not talking anything about the cacao, the story about him or her. Look the process, what, why, what, how they are preparing the cacao. Mm -hmm. The traditional things that they serve in your, I have a hikar in my hands, the hikar is a traditional cup. Is is um, it's a coconut, kind of a coconut. It's a fruit that grows in Mexico, and it, this is where the Aztecs and the Mayas drink the cacao. Again, it's a fruit. is is natural. is grounding. Sometimes they're giving us the cacao in a plastic cups. I don't know if if we are we are aware of that kind of details. And I'm just, it's, it's a way of sharing for everyone, including me, including us, um, to create a more conscious around the cacao. 
all the things that I'm telling you, it don't come from me or mine. It's it's just different knowledge that we are absorbing from different sources, and we we just keep um, sharing the message. Um, there is different type of ceremonies. That's that's also a different um, rituals that we have to share. Mm. I have been assisting in the Gekka ceremonies here in Australia. There is another one in Bali, South Asia, really popular in the pyramids of Chi, um, that we will keep going and sharing. Um, we will have to invite more people and share their experience. There is another one in Guatemala, in Peru, obviously Latin America, Central America. So, what is happening in these cacao ceremonies and what's the difference? As I told you, it depends of the facilitator. Um, they are using some, some sometimes tarots, they are using um, dancing, movements, yoga, meditation, um, sounds. They are sometimes they are singing. Mm. I, I and I I would like to share what we we think, what what we know that is a uh, unique or more true cacao ceremony. Not from us, not from us, not from Frido. From someone that um, we met and his name is Efren. We call El Abuelo Efren. Um, when we are bringing this podcast to you, we, we start doing some research about um, all the cacao ceremonies around the world and how is these people doing the ceremonies. And we met the Abuelo Efren from the Maya land, from Tabasco, south of Mexico. And she shares some interesting things about how they are doing the ceremonies. Mm. And I will tell you what they say to us. So, um, the first thing is they are opening a portal. Uh, they are opening at the beginning and they are closing in at the end. Um, for you to call a product cacao ceremony, it involves that the place where the cacao is growing is an ancestral sacred place. Means that the cacao they call the cacao tal, that is the house of the cacao, is the is where the cacao is growing. Imagine the cacao ha, as a house with a lot of trees, with a lot of birds, with a lot of animals, insects, reptiles, plants. More than 100, 180 plants inside the cacao tal. So that house, to put it in a way, it has to be sacred. You, 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 will have, you will have to allow nature convert and transform that place into a sacred place. And that means we, they are respecting that place. Um, they grow in that tree of cacao with an intention. So these people, they are growing with intention, not just to commercialize the cacao. They put the intention for healing. So do we know when we are drinking cacao in a ceremony, do we know what was the intention of the people that was living in the cacotal? to grow that cacao? 
Do we know that? So, when I asked the abuelo friend if <laughs> if everyone can buy a cacao ceremony, the answer of him shocked me because when they put the intention, they took the cacao, the fruit of the cacao, only two times per year to do the ceremonies. And one, the first one, is to, to forgive. They say to the cacao, forgive me. Forgive me because maybe I'm destroying or I'm cutting in not the right way because I'm using the tools not in the right way. So it's just to say sorry to the tree because maybe we are not doing it in the same way. And he said, I say forgive for myself and I say forgive for the other ones that they are using cacao in not the right way. And I think that's powerful. He's saying sorry in the first ceremony that they are doing the first to the cacao, not to us, to the cacao. And he's saying sorry for me and sorry for everyone. That's powerful. That's a ceremony. I feel it. I can feel it. Um, after, he said, we are just taking the fruits of the cacao twice a year. One is, as I tell you, to forgive. And, and the other one is more like a, like a blessing. Thank you for giving us. And yet, he can say, I will use the cacao for this, 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 this. Some of this cacao, we will sell it. With this cacao, we will provide for food. Um, if it's a ceremonial cacao, it's just for healing, not for commercialize the product. So for me, and I will share with you this question, if cacao ceremony means that we they only take the fruits twice a year because they are doing these ceremonies in their community, how we can have a lot of cacao ceremonies everywhere? Cacao ceremony is a product. If a product, a true, a true one, called cacao ceremony, has not to be commercialized, because if you look as a product, the energy of the cacao is lost. Is lost. Because again, you are taking the cacao for a different reason. I told you at the beginning that we see the cacao as a human. And I love this because I think we can connect more easy to the way that I'm sharing to you. So imagine the injury of the cacao for many, many years is the commercialization of it. That's the pain point for all these years to the cacao. Since the Europeans arrived, since the Aztecs arrived to the Mayas territory, because the Aztecs, if we remember the Aztecs, was the one that they looked the cacao seed as a currency. And the Aztecs, they were dominated all, all the civilizations around. So they asked them to pay with cacao as a, a, as a tribute. So it's like paying a rent with cacao seeds. So they transform that pureness, that um, spirit, healthy uh, way of seeing cacao in, into an economy thing. Since the Aztecs, then the Europeans came, and then we have one of the most selling products called chocolate. And Try to look the human that I'm telling you, where is cacao? 
And we don't care who is cacao. We don't care. We don't realize, but I'm using the metaphor for cacao. We don't know the source of the things. We don't care. Chocolate tastes nice. It's We can buy for $1 and that's all. And it's tasty and delicious and it's and sweet. We don't care. And uh, the cacao, the injury, the trauma, the, the ones who know astrology, the chiron, the chiron for the cacao is the commercialization. So again, we were taking the sacred things to commercialize the product. Again, I think that it, it feels like the foreigner, the people that comes from outside, comes from Central, comes to Central America, South America. And then now is not the product. Now is the tradition that they are exploding. And I accept that we are, we were in the same way. Because we were selling cacao ceremonies. We were selling cacao product, cacao ceremony product. That's not truth. And it was really shocking for us because we were, we were in the same way. And from our side, we have to say sorry. We have to say apologize. We have to say that was not true. Because we didn't know what is, what is a true one. So, the difference is now we know that we didn't know. Now we know that we didn't know. And we would like to, and we would love to share all this with you. In this podcast, with all this information, with our research that we are doing, um, I would say again, it's not about what we are thinking because we are not the source of this. We are just looking for a different kind of sources uh, to bring more authentic a way of, of sharing and respecting cacao. So again, it's not a way of respect the cacao as a product, as a ceremony. And I just want to finish this first episode with um, trying to to find more when we are assisting to these events. I I I am saying do we know if the cacao facilitator have seen a real cacao in his life? The abuela friend was saying, everyone can share a ceremony if you have a real connection with it, if you can talk with the cacao spirit. But if you don't have any connection, you cannot say you are doing a cacao ceremony. So the facilitator that you have in front they have been seeing a cacao, a real cacao in his life. They have been touched a cacao tree. You are interested in knowing more about the cacao. They know about the process. They know about the plant. So we need to know more things about what we are absorbing. Do you know where the cacao comes from? What was the intention of growing that cacao? It's just not to go to the event and absorb what they what they are sharing to us. It's more to go a little bit more deep. And that's our purpose with this podcast, just to share um, and share the way that we are looking at cacao. Hopefully, um, we'll see you here the next time, sharing more cacao um, journeys. <laughs>